Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel for another vital tutorial. In this video is going to be the second of a series of three logically about the wavetable editor and in general ways to make your own wavetables within vital. And uh, yeah, that will be it. So if you like what I'm talking about, please do subscribe to this channel and help me supporting it and making more content like this. And yeah, this will be it. And I will not bother you with any more self promotion along with this video. So this said, let's get going. So here we are with vital with our friendly interface with a subtle wave and initialized patch. And without further ado, let's dive into our wavetable editor. Now this offers several possible sources. We've seen in the previous video about what to do with audio file sources. And now we're going to talk about the wave sources and the line sources, which are the other possibilities. The wave source, which is the one you find here as um, the default from the default one has two areas which you can edit this one in which you can in the amplitude space go and draw your shapes actually not really shapes you can only draw lines uh, with this grid or with uh, another grid you know you can change the size of it go up to 16 and whatever and cut the things the way you want and also you can uh, go and remove the grid you can go to zero and then add this spiky noisy thing if you if it if that is your thing not it isn't mine really or you know draw things freehand and make a mess out of it however you like and everything everything really in this um in the synth works with keyframes so you can create another keyframe Let's say I put it this one at the end and I'm going to make some edits, make it different. And then uh, I can, you know, work here or work down here in the FFT domain where I can control the volume and the phase of every single harmonic one by one. I can also right click and do things like clear everything on the left and the right, clear the odd or the even way or the even waves or even just randomize everything. If that is your thing, it isn't usually mine. I never do this, but you know, it's just a thing I can do. And then mess up the phases again, whatever you like. What happens now is that if I move this, if I move, move this slider, I go from one to the other. If I do not want to, why would I not want to? Well, let's say, for example, I'm trying to do something like not more like not properly, you know, um, a wave which goes from a from being uh, not just a, you know a collection of scannable waves, but you know just a collection of waves such as you know like I'm trying to do like in the basic shapes one or something which is just a collection of different waves. In this case, you see here it will stay just there as it is, goes there, boom! Now it's a sawtooth and up to the end where it becomes the sawtooth. This is more, much more you know it's discrete and with uh, with without morphing tables and you can make a waveform blend so it will morph in the amplitude spectrum or a spectral blend where it will morph in the frequency spectrum and this will be will have this will have slightly different effects on uh, sonic wise though of course you know you're always going and you know it all depends on what you're trying to achieve so basically, this is it as far as the wave source goes. So I'm going to remove this one and I'm going to get into the line source. In the line source, apparently you see the same thing, but these things down here are grayed out. You cannot add, you cannot in, intervene on single harmonics. But what you can do here in the in the amplitude space is a little more complex. You can add points and you can change the curvature point by point and make things happen and say, for example, here now I create another keyframe and I make something completely different happen. And what will happen is that from one position to the other, the points that I'm moving will move according to how I move them. So now say from from here doesn't necessarily make sense, but it gives you an idea of what I'm trying, what you know, what, what happens doing these things. So I'm going to remove this again and add again a wave source and make this a basic simple saw wave just for for making the rest more understandable. And then I have these 
modifiers. What these modifiers do, the, the nice thing is, I mean, you can have more sources and have on each th each one of them a chain of modifiers. And then you can do and resynthesize everything into another wavetable if you feel like you really need to save some computing power. A phase shift might seem something pointless or simple, but it really has a lot of uses. This shifts the phase of our whole wave, just this way. Uh, it has a bunch of uses, like for example, you can sum two of these, uh, one in one sense and one in the other, and just phase shift one to get another way of having a pulse width modulation, for example, or whatever, or, or you know, combine this with other non-symmetrical things to add interesting effects. But you can also use it in other ways, like this plus even minus odd. What does it do? You know, you shift the phase, and then you you can see in the bottom here you have the odd harmonics and the even harmonics get uh, get moved in opposite directions, which can create a lot of other interesting effects. And you can hear it's a, it's a lot a lot of uh, a lot of this. Then you can go for harmonic, which will move all harmonics at the same time. You can see down here you have all harmonics moving like like one, and that's that's what it does. And you can also go for harmonics plus even odd, uh, so that this thing will have, you see, e every single harmonic having the odd ones and the even ones moving in opposite directions. And then there is also this clear, which doesn't seem to do anything. Seems like it just flattens out the, the phases of everything. Maybe it makes sense for, for samples or for stuff of which you, you do not want the phase to be messed up. You want it to be coherent and you cannot think of an idea, any other way to do it. I don't know really. I don't really understand what sense this makes. Beyond this, there's more, of course. There's Wave Window, which has a lot of uses. Most of them, I mean, you can use it in a creative way on waves such as this, but the main use, in my opinion, is to make, uh, you know, samples and edgy waves uh, more musical, because if you have one of those that has, you know, a lot of things that end up high up here or down there, when you morph from one way to the other, you get that your, your thing won't sound too well. And it has several ways. You can have different curves, linear square which you know self-explanatory somehow and but also you can have yeah this thing already has some this you know it does something and this one is already too 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 close i want it to be you know to go back to being a, a whole sort of it has its uses but you can also go for Wiggle, which is completely different, and you will see that. What does Wiggle do? You can see here that basically, you know, it has this effect on your wave. It just, you know, pushes on the other side and then goes back. And, you know, it's a little bit more creative and has a bunch of uses, especially, you know, to control those parts of the wave, which might get very noisy if you use the other modifiers, because there's plenty of ways to make a mess out of your wave. So like, let's go and make a mess out of our wave. Uh, here there is the frequency filter, which isn't probably the most useful for making a mess out of it, because it's basically a filter, yeah, as you would expect. It's called the frequency filter, and guess what? It's a filter. Uh, what it does is uh, allowing you to filter your your signal in straight from your wavetable editor, which has a lot of uses. You can make it being a low pass, a band pass, a high pass, or even a comb, which has, is kind of weird used into this, but it has its uses and its its effectiveness. I need to make it. There is this thing that you know it doesn't always work. You know, you, it doesn't always give you your visual feedback on what you're doing with your wave. Now it now it's doing it, uh, but it doesn't always do that. See, and you can make it do a lot of weird things with your sound. It's kind of nice. It's you know, it used to be it used to be uh, a sawtooth, and now it's this thing which has com com it's completely different goes from being a, a, a square wave to being a something like this. Yeah. 
definitely as it's uses. And then you can, of course, go for high pass, band pass, whatever, whatever you feel you're into the way you're like, you're into filtering your own signal. Then you have the slew limiter, which probably the saw wave isn't the, the most appropriate thing to show. Say, for example, here, I'm going to make something squarish. Now, what happens with the slew limiter is that it, you know, just adds this limit to how mouse sharp some some things some transitions can be this has you know is quite an effect on uh, you know noisy things say for example here i'm doing this thing you know removing the grid and making this noisy and messed up or maybe you know i have a wavetable which has already had a lot of uh, has undertaken a lot of abuse from our our other modifiers or a noisy sample this will make it less noisy so, for example, let me go back and let's reset this one and make another keyframe here to, to hear the effect of it. Just, it just moved it a bit. And now... Kind of useful in a bunch of situations to make things more usable. You know, there's wavetables. It's really a thing in, in no time you transform a wavetable into a complete mess. And so it's it can be useful to have things that make make things back, you know, bring things a little back to back to making sense. So I'm going to make that make back make send it back to being a subtle wave. And then I have here the wave folder, which is a very West West Coast thing. What does a wave folder do? It folds your wave this way. Yeah, now the, the visual feedback works. And this, of course, brings out a lot of high frequency. I think Psytrance people will totally love it. And uh, yeah, there's, there, there isn't much more to say about it, apart from it from being a very wild sort of distortion. And, and uh, well, in the more integer numbers, it makes a lot more sense. And if you don't bring it up to like 32, well, it's a little bit more civilized. Like See, this is a slightly more civilized thing, and it can have a bunch of applications. Now I'm gonna keep it like this because and add another modifier because the wave warp is easier to understand with something which isn't which isn't a sawtooth. So here, what does a wave warp do? I'm gonna do it the other way around so that I'm here where there's no no actually I, I need to do it here because if I do it there, it won't work. X, you know, it warps the wave in the X axis. See here, it widens it from the center. Or if I go in the negative direction, it kind of compresses it to the center. Or I can make it asymmetric, so it will just compress it on one side or the other. And the Y thing will do the same, you know, doing it in the Y direction, in, in the vertical direction. Or I can make this one asymmetrical, so it will bend it in one direction or in the other. And that's, you know, quite, can be quite interesting if you, if you, if you're into that kind of things and you can hear it and you can hear it at work. Now, uh, the nice thing about all this is that you are not forced to use one wave and you are not forced to use one modifier. Say, for example, here I had, I had another wave. Let me add a line source, which is this, this sawtooth. And say, I'm going to add a, a phase shift and I'm going to make it like uh, plus even minus odd. And I'm going to move it somewhere in this direction. But I'm also going to add a wave folder and I'm going to add it, but I'm going to send it before before the phase the the frequent the phase shift so that I here I have a wave folder I'm gonna make put another one here and I'm going to just go the other way around compared to my other wave so that this is slightly more folded in the beginning and then say I don't know I'm gonna also add a, a wave window and mess this up too a little bit so I'm gonna make it let's say I'm gonna send it from here here and this one is going to get back all, all the way back 
And now you see I'm having all this stuff all one over the other. <laughs> And I've made a very complex wavetable, you will you will agree. I mean it that's definitely just out of a few things. And this is the beauty of it. And yeah. And then there is resynthesis. But I'm not gonna talk about resynthesis today. I am not. Because resynthesis is gonna be the topic of my next video. So if you wanna know more about resynthesis and ideas on things to do with it, just as I said already, subscribe. Yeah, I lied when I said I wasn't gonna do any more self promotion. Just subscribe and wait for my next video to come out, and I will tell you all I know about resynthesis, which isn't a lot, but well, it's a little more than nothing. Well, till then, bye. Hope you learned something, hope you find that we found it interesting. See you at my next video.